Here we have graphing a square root function, problem type three. So similarly, we're gonna do the same thing, set what's inside the radical greater than or equal to zero and solve. I get x is less than or equal to one, which means I actually have to use one and then values less than one, like zero, negative one, and negative two. And so when I plug those in there, for here I'm gonna get zero, here I'm gonna get three, here I'm gonna get three square root of two, and here I'm going to get six, no. I'm gonna get three square root of three. So let me see what those are as decimals so that I can graph them on my paper. For you, at least if you know what they are in decimals, you'll know if the computer graphed them correctly. So then let's draw this here. So we have one, two, one, and then one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have one and zero, that's where I start, then zero and three, then negative one and 4.2, and then negative two and 5.1. And so then the graph is going in this direction. And again, you type in the coordinates, you can hit the little icon that looks like that with a little X, and then just type in each X and each Y, hit the button again, type in this X and this Y, hit that button again, type in this X and this exact Y, do not put the decimal, otherwise it'll say it's wrong. So put the exact answer in there for Y, it'll plot that point. And then negative two and this exact answer for Y, and it'll plot that point. Once it has all the points plotted, you're going to hit the graphing function um, and it'll draw the curve for you automatically. Okay, so last one, I'm gonna take that radicand and set it greater than or equal to zero. I'm gonna minus six on both sides. I'm gonna actually multiply by two on both sides to get rid of the fraction. But I did multiply by a positive two so the symbol's not going to flip over. And if I am left with the 1, if, even if I were to divide by 1, a symbol would still not flip over. Oh, negative 6 times 2 is not 6. It's 12. And if I divide that by 1, it's still 12. So here I have to start off with the x value of negative 12. But I have to pick numbers that are greater than negative 12, which means to the right of negative 12. So like negative 11, negative 10, and negative 9. So then if I plug these in there, let's see what happens. We get square root of 1 half times negative 12. Oops. Plus 6. We get 0. Then I'm going to go back in there and I'm going to change that to now 11. This does not give me the exact answer. And I will not be able to type a decimal in the computer and the computer give me the correct answer. So it's going to be important that I do this separately. So I take the square root, or I'm sorry, I just take 1 half times negative 11 plus 6 and figure out what that is. And that's the square root of 1 half. And then I can do in my calculator the square root of 1 half, and it will, oh, it doesn't let me do that. It likes me to do the square root of the top and the bottom separately. So the square root of 1 over the square root of 2. And then now it gives me the exact answer, rationalized denominator and everything. Okay, so same thing for the next one. I'm gonna plug in negative 10 inside the radical first. And then my answer is the square root of this. What is the square root? That's not a fraction, so what is the square root of one? It's just one. 
Now I'm going to do it again. 1 half times negative 9 plus 6. I get 3 halves, but I need to do the square root of 3 halves. So I'm going to do the square root of 3 over the square root of 2. And then it will rationalize it for me and give me the square root of 6 over 2. Now for me on paper, I do need to know what that is. That's about 1.2. And I also need to know what the square root of 2 over 2 is. And that's about 0.7. So you cannot put the decimals inside Alex. It won't mark you correct. You have to put the exact answers, which is why I wanted to include this as one of the examples so you could know how to get the exact answer. How do you do that? Work on what's inside here first. If it happens to be a fraction in your calculator, you're going to take the square root of the numerator over the square root of the denominator. And then whatever it pops out will be the exact answer. If you get a whole number, then just do the square root of that number and it'll be fine. It'll be the exact answer, okay? So now let's try to graph this. So this is negative 12 which means I'm all the way over here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And then 1, 2, 3. So negative 12 and 0, negative 11 and 0.7, so about there. Negative 10 and 1 and then negative 9 and 1.2. So this one is looking like this, but it's way over here on the left-hand side of the graph. 